Hello. Hey, we are working on Chapter 2, uh, Section 6, the derivative of inverse functions. And we have already gone through the basics of inverses and just looked at what those were as far as what we've learned in previous classes. And then we just barely got started with looking at how to define the derivative of an inverse. And we talked a bit about, let's see here, I gotta get the pen working on, on this for me. There we go. We talked a bit about this function here that says the derivative of the inverse is f prime of a. So what is that? Well, there's a for f of x is the input value for f of x. It's known as b to the inverse because the inverse function would be taking the range of the original function and mapping it to the domain of the inverse. So the, the inverse function has the ordered pair b, a, whereas the original function has the ordered pair a, b. All right, I want to just go through an example. Um, we'll start with A. Some for, for a different hour, maybe you've already done this one, and you could scroll ahead a bit. All righty, so one thing I'm going to do, I want to find G prime of 4, where X is equal to 4 then. G's ordered pair, well, here they told us the original function, that the original function has 2, 4, that makes the inverse function g's ordered pair 4, 2. And I want to find g prime of 4. That's going to be like evaluating 1 over f prime of 2. You know what, let me write that just a bit different. That's going to be like finding f prime of g of 4, which is like f prime, well, if I put in 4 to g, I get out 2. So it's going to be like finding f prime of 2. Off to the side, let's go find f prime of x. Well, f of x is equal to x squared, so this would be 2x. And now I need to evaluate f prime at 2, so I get 2 times 2 is 4. So it appears that the inverse's derivative at 4 is one-fourth. The original function at 2 had a slope of 4. The inverse function at its domain value 4 has one-fourth. So they have reciprocal relationships, don't they? 4 and one-fourth are reciprocals. So it's a reciprocal relationship. Not an opposite reciprocal. They're not perpendicular slopes. They are just um, reciprocals. The next one, it says y equals 2x plus cosine x. Find the inverse function g of x, the derivative, at, at um, x equals 1. So I want to find g prime of 1, which would be like finding 1 at f prime of g of 1. All right, so we need to get f prime. f prime of x would be 2 plus, oops, how about minus sign? Minus sign of x. Just taking the derivative of the original. I need to evaluate that at some value. And that value is at g of 1. What is g of 1? Well, I don't have the inverse function to just put 1 into that inverse function. So what I do know is that 1 would be the output for the original function. So when I start with 1 as the domain for the inverse, it becomes the range of the other function. All I need to do is figure out then what was the input. So I'm going to set the output 1 equal to 2 
times something plus cosine x. All right, this one is a little bit hard to solve. And honestly, I would probably have to use a calculator if it weren't so um, easy by guess and check. So the only way I'm doing this is guess and check method. And I notice that if I put in 0, I get 1 equals 0 plus 1 because the cosine of 0 is 1. And I get a true statement. So I, I've just figured out that my x value was 0. So for f of x, to get an output of 1, I put in 0. And for g, then it's just going to be the reverse of that coordinate pair. That was a lot of work, right? Let's make that smaller. We'll get rid of it, one of the two. Alrighty. That allows me to go over here now and complete this. So I want to look at f prime of g of 1. And that means I'm looking at f prime g of 1. g of 1 gives me 0. So I'm looking at f prime of 0. f prime of 0. Oops, don't need to really rewrite that, do I? And I have my f prime. I have it right here. So f prime of 0 would be 2 minus sine of 0. 1 over 2 minus sine of 0. Everybody knows the sine of 0 is 0, so we get 1 half. f prime or g prime of of 1. I was looking at this. That doesn't make sense. This should just say g, the derivative g of 1 equals 1 over f prime of g of 1. Letter D, g prime of negative 1 where g of x is the inverse of f of x. So if I'm doing g of negative 1, negative 1 is the input. And I know that I want to get the inverse derivative here. That's like finding 1 over f prime of g of negative 1. So now really what I need to figure out is what is g of negative 1. And I'm going to have to use my table. If negative 1 is an input to the inverse, that means it's a range to the original function f of x or to the other function. So my table only has f of x and f prime. It does not have anything to do with g. But I know this is a y value or an output. So I'm going to look under the f of x column and look for negative 1. Did you spy where it is? It's right here, isn't it? There's f of or negative 1. And the value that gets us that is a 3. So my ordered pair would have to be 3, negative 1 for f of x. And for the inverse function g, its ordered pair would be the reverse, negative 1, 3. So now let's go and update this statement. It's going to be 1 over f prime of, well, g of negative 1, g of negative 1 gets me 3. So now I need f prime of 3, f prime, no longer in the f of x, but I'm in the f prime, 
f prime of 3 gives me negative 4. So I'm going to have negative 1 fourth is the inverse's derivative. Notice everything happened on that same horizontal line. We started in the interior looking up the value of negative 1 because that was an output value for f of x. And that told me then that its starting value was 3. When I put in 3, I got out negative 1. And the derivative of 3 was negative 4, which we needed there. This you could read, um, it just talks about continuity and inverse functions. So if f is continuous, then we know that f inverse is going to be continuous. If f is increasing, then f inverse is also going to be increasing. If f is decreasing, likewise, f inverse is decreasing. If f is differentiable at some value c, then the inverse is going to be differentiable at f of c, which would be the y value for the original function. So range becomes domain to the inverse function. Hopefully this makes sense. I want to go back to one of the pictures. Um, yesterday we could have mapped out, right? We, we maybe mapped this out and found the inverse function. And we know that they are mirror images. But notice how this has a positive slope. So f prime of x would be greater than 0 on this whole function. Well, look what the function's doing here. It is also increasing. f inverse's derivative is greater than 0 as well. So it kind of shows you if the original is continuous, then the inverse is continuous. If, let's get this back. If I have a nice smooth curve, it's differentiable any, everywhere. Well, the mirror image is going to stay nice and smooth and differential. If this one had some sort of cusp to it, well, then this one would have to have a cusp to it. Not differentiable on the original, then not differentiable on the inverse function. So hopefully those kind of just make some common sense there. And finally, it says use the derivative to determine whether f of x is equal to a cubic function is strictly monotonic over its entire domain and therefore would have an inverse. We talked about monotonic. Monotonic functions are one-to-one -one functions which are guaranteed to have an inverse. So that's why they're asking us to prove that this function is monotonic. Monotonic means it's either always increasing or an always decreasing scenario. All right, so to know increasing and decreasing, we would take a derivative. Let's do that, 3x squared plus 5. Do you notice anything about 3x squared plus 5? One thing I notice is that no matter if I put in a positive and squared it, or if I put in a negative and squared it, the result is still the same. I still get positive value. So now I can make a nice conclusion that 3x squared is always going to be positive. True? This is always positive. And add to it something that is positive. So positive plus positive will equal positive. That just tells me that f prime of x is always greater than or equal to 0. It's always positive. And based on that, that means that we have f of x is strictly monotonic.
and therefore has an inverse. And that's what the question was. Because it's always positive, it is strictly monotonic and therefore it would have an inverse. Um, what's this one say? If g is the inverse function of f and f of 3 equals 2, find the value g prime of 2 for this function. All right, so let's go into g prime of 2 is equal to 1 over f prime of g of 2. We need an f prime, don't we? f prime, I would bring down 3, x goes to the second, 3 fourths plus 1 is my derivative. I need to know where I'm evaluating that at, don't I? All right. Um, if I know the original function for f, I have the ordered pair, put in 3, get out 2, then g, the inverse, has the ordered pair, put in 2, get out 3. These are the ordered pairs, right? I think it really helps to get that straight in your mind first. So I want g prime of 2. That means I'm going to look at f prime at g of 2, which means I'm really at f prime. If I put in 2 to g, I get out 3. So I'm evaluating f prime at 3. So 1 over, we had calculated our derivative to be 3 fourths of x squared, and then add 1. So it looks like we get 1 over 3 times 9 divided by 4 plus 1. Oh, some fraction work. You're going to love this, you guys. 1 over 27 fourths plus 1. That's like saying 4 fourths instead of 1. Now I'm at 1 over 31 fourths. Dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by its reciprocal. And we conclude with g prime of 2 equals 4 31st. That brings you to, this has been updated, it's now 2-6 section, um, the worksheet, and that is the homework.